Hi, Zion. Pastor Paul here. It's Sunday, May 3rd, and we're continuing our Bible studies, going through our Sunday school lessons and our uh, uh, adult Bible study and Sunday school lessons here. And our appointed lesson for this week for uh, Sunday, May 3rd, as we're uh, going through the book of Acts now, and we're looking at the church post the, the, the resurrection and ascension. And so our study for today is going to be looking at Acts chapter 6 and chapter 7. And so we'll be uh, looking today specifically at um, one of the, uh, the, the really interesting, unique characters of the early church, uh, a man by the name of Stephen, and uh, the events that take place in his life that are recorded by Luke in the book of Acts. And so uh, uh, we'll begin our study today, and we will take a moment to begin with prayer. So, Lord, we just pray that you will guide and bless our time in your word today and our discussion of this word uh, to uh, um, study and examine the life of your servant, Stephen, and uh, the lessons that we can draw from his bold and courageous witness to the faith. And, uh, Lord, we, we just pray that you would uh, give us that same courage uh, to, uh, to live our faith and to trust in you as, uh, as your servant Stephen trusted in you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our, uh, for our lesson today, if you get your Bibles out, um, we're going to have quite a bit of reading to do. Uh, we're going to be covering two chapters, uh, chapter 6 and chapter 7, including a, a pretty lengthy reading from chapter 7, but definitely worth our time to, uh, uh, to hear uh, Stephen's words that, uh, that he speaks to us there in Acts chapter 7. So let's dive right in. Uh, let's start off with uh, uh, chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 1 through 7. So uh, beginning at verse 1 of chapter 6. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. So we're, we're looking at the early church here, and uh, I think it just takes uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, really beneficial for us to take a moment just to stop and really get an understanding of what's going on here in the early church and, uh, and what life is, is really like. Uh, if you watch our, our, our service for today and uh, you see our first reading uh, for the, the Sunday service, uh, we have a reading from Acts chapter 2, and, and this was the reading that was the, uh, the basis for... Uh, Pastor Brian's message for today, and it gives us a, um, a little bit of a snapshot here into what the life was like uh, for the, uh, the, the, the fellowship of the believers, the, uh, uh, the, the early Christians and, and the early Christian church. And so uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 42 to 47, it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were gathered together, and they had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to, added to their number day by day those who were being saved. 
so we 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 get the this this picture of you know the life and and some of the the characteristics of the the, the life in the early church uh, uh specifically some things that uh uh that that we hear you know verse 44 uh they 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 believed and, and they were together and they had all things in common uh they were selling their possessions and belongings distributing the proceeds to all as any had need and so we we get this sort of sense of, of community as a matter of fact even you could call it sort of a communal nature of the the, the life that they had together and uh, and, and so just this, this this little bit of an insight and an understanding of what's going on here in uh, in chapter six when we hear about this this conflict that's arising uh, between the the Hellenists and the Hebrews, um, and, and I think it bears maybe a little bit of talking just for a moment about uh, uh, a distinction that we make sometimes and an understanding that we have between what we might call the the the, the descriptive and what we call the prescriptive. And, you know, sometimes reading God's word and, and trying to understand some of these things and, and, and trying to figure out what the bearing is for us and what the application is for us here today. And, uh, you know, some of us might be wondering right now when we see what life is like in that early church, well, what's going on here? They're all living together. People are selling their, 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 their private property. And it sounds like they have this, uh, the, the, this, this shared property and the, the shared life together. Is this what it's supposed to be like? Is is this how how we're supposed to live? And 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 how do we understand the the descriptive versus the 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 prescriptive? And 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 you have to be careful here because you know there are places in the scriptures where you know we get the thou shalt, and you know it's almost like the doctor giving you that prescription. Here, take this. Here, do this. That's what we mean when we say prescriptive. But then when it's descriptive, sometimes it isn't necessarily a thou shalt do it this way. But it's just describing, this is what was happening. This is what worked for them. This is what they were doing in the context that they find themselves in. I think this is a really uh, uh, careful distinction that we, we do need to make, you know, um, you know, because we can force ourselves and maybe force other believers into situations and, and telling them you got to do it this way as opposed to uh, uh, really listening to the word of God, which is not mandating necessarily a particular way of life or a particular way that the, 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 the church has to be. Um, you know, an example of this one I can think of, you know, you have Mark chapter 16 at the end of that, and, and you have Jesus talking about this thing, you know, you'll, you'll, you can pick up snakes and handle them and, you know, and, and, and you won't be, uh, you won't be harmed by them. And, um, and, and sure enough, later on in the book of Acts, you see Paul shipwrecked on an island and, you know, he gets bitten by a snake and, and every, all the locals say, this is it, he's going to die. And then he survives. And, and, you know, there are some people out there, some Christians today, who, who, who take that as prescriptive and, and you know, are snake handlers. Um, for most of us, though, I think we look at that situation and, and we use what I like to call the consecrated common sense up here that God gave us and said, you know, look, we, we, we don't want to take those kinds of risks. You know, uh, scriptures also tell us, remember, Jesus' temptation. Don't, don't test God. Don't tempt God. Uh, don't put yourself into unnecessary harm and danger and, uh, and, and use that, that consecrated common sense that you have up here to, uh, to, to do what's safe and, and to do what's right. And so, you know, when we read those kinds of things and we see what happened to Paul with the snake, definitely descriptive, not prescriptive, not telling us what we should do, but describing some of the, the wondrous and miraculous things that are happening uh, in the early church and uh, 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 a description of, uh, of, of the ways that the Holy Spirit is working to, uh, to get that word out. And so now coming back around to the early church and this question of, you know, holding things together, selling, you know, uh, as Pastor Brian said in, in the message today, the, the question of, you know, hey, now what, what do you do? Are you supposed to go out and sell your house and car, you know, to be a part of the church or something like that? And, and, and the, the answer to that is no. I think what, what we're definitely getting here is a uh, picture of, of what it was like for that early church in that, in that environment that they were in. Needing that support, needing that, that close-knit, tight-knit community uh, to, uh, to, to support one another uh, and to, uh, to help one another. So do we necessarily go to that extreme and, 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 and lay that down as a prescription for how we live? No. 
But what we do look at is we look at, well, what are some of the details here and what are some of the things that do apply no matter what context you're in, be it first century uh, Jerusalem or uh, uh, 1500s Germany or 21st century America. And, um, and, and I think a couple of things that you definitely get here very clearly is you, you get the sense of generosity uh, that, that you're called to live as, as a life of follower of Christ and the life of a, a Christian. Uh, life in the church is a life of generosity. Um, we, we receive abundantly from God, and, and so we share that abundantly with one another. Uh, another thing that we see here is, uh, is the sense of community and, uh, and, and the sense of cooperation. I mean, that, that, that really is alive in the church. Um, there, there's never an instance, you can't find any instance of, of uh, a Christian going off somewhere and, you know, living as a hermit somewhere off by themselves and, and cutting themselves off from, from everyone and everything else or something like that. that. That's not the picture that you get here, but you get this very clear picture of, you know, we are together. God brings us together uh, as uh, as family, as brothers and sisters in Christ, and 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 those are, are some of the things that uh, uh, descriptively we can gather from this, and then we can say, hey, what does that look like for a 21st century American living where we live right now, or a, a 21st century wherever you might be? Um, you know, how how does that work? You know, would there be some models in some places where this uh, where where this example of of the early first century Christian church might work in the world today? You know, well, maybe in some parts of the world where, you know, you're, you're facing a, a lot of that persecution, need that tight-knit community, you know, there, there, there might be places where, where that's called for. But just be aware of what the word is saying and, and the context that surrounds it and also the context that, that we are living in here, too. So generosity, uh, community, cooperation, important things for us to learn. So uh, a couple of other notes here from uh, chapter uh, from verses 1 through 7 in chapter 6. Uh, this whole conflict, uh, Hellenists and the Hebrews, um, basically we have a couple different groups of people. You have uh, um, uh, one group, the, the Hebrews, uh, your, your traditional, uh, I guess you could say Aramaic-speaking uh, Jews who were uh, converting to what was called the Way, uh, uh, the, the early Christian church, as they called themselves, the Way. Uh, so you have those, uh, the ones that we would typically probably think of when we think of a, a setting like Jerusalem. But you also have this other group called the Hellenists. And basically when you hear the Hellenists, just remember that, that we're talking about Greeks here. And so these are people who are Greek speakers. Uh, they're, they're people who uh, probably live sort of culturally, uh, sort of that, that Greek life. Uh, and and so, uh, so, so those are the two different groups that, that we're dealing with here. You know, language barriers, uh, things like that interesting to see how in the early church you know it wasn't just a monolithic group of people but it was diverse uh we had people of uh, of different backgrounds and different uh uh different languages and, and from different locales who uh who were uh um who, who were called uh to to follow jesus and to trust in him so uh so so we see that very on in, in the earliest days of the church this is uh this is what it looked like and and this is how this is what what it was like and and so uh uh, th this whole daily distribution and, and what's taking place. You know, so here we see in action what chapter 2 was talking about. You know, you, you have the widows, and so, you know, the, the, the distribution of food and the distribution of the, 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 the means and the resources that, that folks need to live. And uh, apparently for, uh, for whatever reason, you know, maybe because of the, the, the differences in language and, and things like that, uh, there were uh, uh, there were some difficulties. Some of the, uh, uh, the, the the Greek speakers, the Hellenists, were saying that uh, they were getting left out. Things weren't getting to them like they were supposed to do that. And so then this brings us to the very exciting topic of church administration. Uh, oh boy, isn't this something that we all want to talk about? You know, and, but I, in seriousness, though, I'm, I'm being a little sarcastic here. You know. You know, nobody nobody gets excited about church administration. We we get excited about coming to church and hearing the word and and receiving the sacrament and studying the Bible and getting together with our friends and 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 talking with them and 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 spending time together and things like that. And then you get to the business side of the church, and oh my, that can be a, that can be a tough one, can it? You know, this is where we you know we we need things like articles of incorporation and constitutions, and we need all the boards to do the different work that needs to be done and 
it maybe isn't the most exciting thing, but it's important stuff. And we see here in the early church just how important those things were. So important. This is one of the first things after the ascension they're, they're, they're dealing with here. Uh, you know, getting these, uh, getting the, these guys together uh, who will be the, 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 the deacons, um, the, uh, some of the, the, we can think of as the lay leaders in the church, uh, laying on of hands, anointing them for this uh, special task that's in front of them. Uh, interestingly enough, we, you know, one of the issues we have here is that we, we, uh, we, we've got Greek speakers who are saying they're getting left out here. And so we get uh, some people with some uh, Greek names uh, who are being picked and selected for this. So it's a way of, uh, of making sure we got some representation and that these, uh, uh, you know, the, the, these Greek widows are going to be, uh, Greek speaking widows are going to be taken care of and that uh, maybe trying to overcome some of those language barriers. And so uh, some of the unique gifts that some of these, uh, um, uh, some of these, these, these gentlemen are bringing uh, to this calling that, uh, that they are going to be living out. Uh, but but what is uh, really important here is that you know even though um, you know these guys are going to maybe be involved in, uh, um, in in some of that business side of the church, uh, which is so very important. Uh, that that business side, the church administration, doesn't happen off in its own separate little bubble over here, uh, where people are just you know doing that and and, and taking care of of those things. But uh, as it says here, uh, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, uh, whom whom we will appoint for this duty. So the wisdom, you know, earthly wisdom, you know, some some guys who are probably good administrators, uh, some some money guys, some. Uh, 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 pastoral care guys, people who are good at listening and, uh, and, and good at taking care of some of these people who, who felt like they were, uh, they were being overlooked. Um, you know, a variety of different gifts that they might have, you know, earthly gifts, but yet above all else, and, and, and a part of this too, full of the spirit, uh, leadership in the church, you know, men who will, uh, uh, who will um, uh, study the word and be in the word. So one through seven, uh, let's move on here. Uh, go to look at uh, verses eight through 15. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. So Stephen, uh, one of the seven in particular, picked uh, in the focus for our, uh, for our study for today. And... Uh, um, by all accounts and, and everything we see here, uh, uh, someone who seems to be a very wise man, uh, uh, you know, wonderful speaker, uh, uh, you know, great, great wisdom, and also that, that Holy Spirit that rests upon him, uh, you know, and, and uh, um, even the last verse 15, you know, his face uh, was like that of an angel. Um, you know, you, you can just see that, you know, this, this description of the, the innocence that, that he carries with him, you know, that, that both that, that wisdom, uh, you know, um, the, how wise as serpents, but also as innocent as doves, uh, the, the, what Stephen brings to all of this and the problem that he faces here too, as a man of honesty and a man of integrity, um, when, when, when we desire to live that way, uh, that, that means that we will at times have those roadblocks that we're going to face. Uh, uh, th this doesn't mean it's going to be clear, smooth sailing for you as a, a follower of Christ and a person who is doing the right thing for the right reasons. Um, you're, you're still going to face opposition as Stephen is, is facing opposition. And, and, and at times here, you know, the bald-faced lies and accusations that uh, 
uh, that, that these opponents are, are throwing against him here. Um, you know, how is it that they're discrediting Stephen? What are they doing? Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're speaking untruth. I mean, they're, they're, they're putting words in his mouth that, that were never there. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, they're, they're holding up the law and, and Moses and, 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 and they're, you know, saying that, well, the, the Stephen is preaching about Jesus and, and talking about Jesus and, and, and saying that, you know, he, he's talking about the savior, the, this guy who has come, who, who's going to tear down the temple. He's, you know, he, he's come to undo the, the work of Moses and, and, and to trash all of that and to, uh, to tear all that down which couldn't be farther from the truth. You know, Jesus himself says he, he, he has not come to abolish the law and the prophets and, and to undo that, but he has come to, to, to bring it to the fullness and, and fulfillment of all that. And, and Stephen uh, is, uh, is following right in, in line here with that. And so uh, important to notice and important to remember as Christians that there is not, as, as the opponents of Stephen and as some have tried to say, there's not a discontinuity with the Old Testament and the New Testament. It, it's not as if we're talking about one God over here and another God over here and, you know, something entirely different that he's doing, but rather it's a continuity across the whole spectrum from Genesis to Revelation everything in between it is all as john i love john's gospel he gives us a, the thesis statement as i like to call it of the bible everything all of this these things are written that you might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that by believing in him you might have life in his name and so the, the continuity of, of all of that you know as uh, as as followers of christ we we we, we don't leave the old testament behind we we don't we don't forget about that but rather we read all of the scriptures everything from uh from from, from genesis all the way through the the old testament all of it as that uh that that the, the words about christ words about god's gracious working in this world to to, to bring about the, the salvation of this world and uh, and so, um, but this this is something that uh, will will show up again uh, later on, the second century, about a hundred years or so, or a little bit more than that. After all of these events, uh, we see time and time again some uh, you know people who uh, 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 who want to take Christ and want to take the faith, and they want to use that as something to to trash or to tear up the Old Testament. Uh, famous in all this is a guy about the middle of the second century named Marcion, who made that sort of divide and, and wanted to basically uh, have the, the Christian church throw out all the Old Testament and say, look, that, that doesn't apply anymore. That, that, that isn't relevant. Uh, but as we're going to see and as we'll hear from, from, from Stephen and, and, and the words that he uses, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, as Christians, we see that continuity all the way through Scripture. Uh, everything pointing us to Christ. Uh, so let's dive in. We have a long section here, so uh, 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 settle in, grab your cup of coffee, uh, and, uh, and and listen here. Uh, as I'm reading this, this is going to be 53 verses, 1 through 53. Uh, and as I listen to the, as I as you listen to this, as I read it to you, um, imagine yourself. Uh, might, I'm sorry, this is a real stretch, I know, but imagine yourself in the maybe place of those uh, uh, the, those accusers, those people who are leveling those uh, those false accusations. You know, listening to the, the the incredible words of Stephen and 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 what he has to say here, and uh, uh, imagine how 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 does this affect you? Uh, what, how do you feel as, as you hear that? So uh, maybe listen and, and uh, listen with those ears, think in that way as, as I read uh, this section to you. And the high priest said, Are these things so? And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, Go out from your land. And from your kindred, and go into the land that I will show you. Then he went out from the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his father died, God removed him from there into this land in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, 
the promise to give it to him as a possession and to his offspring after him, though he had no child. And God spoke to this effect that his offspring would be sojourners in a land belonging to others who would enslave them and afflict them 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they serve, said God. And after that, they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham became the father of Isaac, and circumcised him on the eighth day, and Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt, but God was with him, and rescued him out of all of his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, king of Egypt who made him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Now there came a famine throughout all Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers on their first visit. And on the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. And Joseph sent and summoned Jacob his father and all his kindred, seventy-five persons in all. And Jacob went down into Egypt, and he died, he and our fathers. And they were carried back to Shechem, and laid in the tomb that Abraham had bought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamor and Shechem. Need a drink? I told you this was going to be a long one, so we're at verse 17 now. But as the time of the promise drew near, which God had granted to Abraham, the people increased and multiplied in Egypt, <coughs> until there arose over Egypt another king who did not know Joseph. He dealt shrewdly with our race and forced our fathers to expose their infants, so that they would not be kept alive. At this time Moses was born, and he was beautiful in God's sight, and he was brought up for three months in his father's house, and when he was exposed... Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. <clears throat> and Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in his words and deeds. When he was forty years old, it came, he, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them wrong, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. <laughs> He supposed that his brothers would understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand, but they did not understand. And on the following day he appeared to them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the man who was wronging his neighbor thrust him aside, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? At this retort, Moses fled and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. Now when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, and a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. And as he drew near to look, there came a voice of the Lord, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob. And Moses trembled and did not dare look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man God sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out, performing wonders and signs in Egypt, and at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for forty years. This is the Moses whom you said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel, who spoke to him at Mount Sinai, with our fathers. He received living oracles to give to us. Our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside. And in their hearts they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make for us gods who will go before us, as this Moses who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered a sacrifice to the idol, and were rejoicing in the works of their hands. But God turned away and gave them over to worship the host of heaven, 
as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring to me slain beasts and sacrifices during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your god, Rephan, the images that you made to worship, and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tent of tent of, of, wit, of witness in the wilderness, just as he just as he who spoke to Moses directed him to make it according to the pattern that he had seen. Our fathers in turn brought it in with Joshua when they dispo, dispossessed the nations that God drove out before our fathers. So it was until the days of David, who found favor in the sight of God and asked to find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who, was, who, who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in your heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. At the beginning of this, I asked you to, to think about this and to hear this as the, maybe with the ears and and uh, you know the the mind of the accusers who who uh, who, who leveled these uh, these accusations uh, against Stephen. And one of the things, first of all, that just comes through just reading this whole thing uh, is, is obviously Stephen is not a guy you would want to try to tangle with. Um, you know the the these uh, uh, the, these guys who who want to level some of these accusations against him. I mean, when we talk about a guy with wisdom. Uh, he he exhibits a keen mind. I mean, just off the top of his head, he is 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 ticking off all of these events, just check mark after check mark after check mark of the the history of Israel. I mean, this whole message it's really uh, a tour de force of Old Testament history. I mean, he takes you through the whole thing, you know, the whole narrative, weaving your way through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and. And leading up to to Moses and and the things that happened, and then bringing us to David and 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 into Solomon and the building of the temple and and all of this, uh, and and so what what's Stephen doing? What what's going on here? Well, it, it's interesting, you know, that the accusation going back to chapter six, the thing that that's being kind of held up here against Stephen is, you know, look, he he's he's disrespecting the tradition. He's disrespecting Moses, he's disrespecting the law, he's disrespecting the temple, you know, all, all of these things, these false accusations that were brought against Stephen, uh, things that, that, that he wasn't doing. And so uh, what do you do when, when they're, 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 they're turning the fire on you? You, you fight fire with the fire. Um, you know, he, he's going straight to God's word. He's not relying on his own, uh, you know, um, d defense here, but rather he's using that God-given gift that he has, uh, his consecrated common sense and his intelligence, uh, uh, a guy obviously who, who was raised in the faith and understood it and, and taking them through uh, the, the whole thing. And, and, and a theme that you'll notice that, that kind of comes out through this all is God's promise. I mean, going all the way back to, to, to Abraham here, uh, you know, um, you know, verse 5, yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as a possession to his offspring. And so we, we see the promise that God's making, the, the promise of, uh, of salvation to, to Abraham, that promise that resounds throughout all the years, the, the, the early uh, parts of, of the, the, the history of, uh, of, of God's people, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, culminating with, uh, with with Joseph and uh, all the ways that God has worked through Joseph, through Moses, uh, David, Solomon, all these individuals to, uh, to to fulfill his promise. You know, he's he, he's he's pointing out that continuity of all this that's going to ultimately 
lead to this destination here. We'll make a cross to Jesus. I mean, he, he, he's proving that point. All this stuff is about Jesus. And so uh, Stephen is pointing that out, saying, look, what we're doing here, what we're talking about here is not some break with the past. We're not trashing all that stuff that happened back here. We're honoring it. We're honoring Abraham. We're honoring Joseph. We're honoring Moses, who especially is being held up by the accusers as the one uh, that, um, that that Stephen and, 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 and the apostles, they're, they're, the accusers are saying, yeah, they're really trashing Moses and, and they're trashing the law. And, and not only that, but he's actually even pointing back and he's reminding them, yeah, y- you're holding up Moses like this. Let me remind you how our people, our forefathers treated Moses and, and the way that they responded to Moses. When, when, when Moses was there, you know, when it was uh, so often so, so clear uh, that, that this is, you know, that this is the one that, that God selected to, to, to be the one to, to take you out of slavery and, 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 and lead you out to the, the, that promised land, fulfilling that promise that was made to Abraham. But yet, what what did these people do? They 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 rejected him. Uh, um, our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside. And in their hearts, they turned to Egypt. Um, that's verse uh, verse thirty nine. And I like to remind people when when what Stephen is describing here. You know, th- this isn't just back during the plagues and everything else when they were having the. When, you know, God was having that, that showdown with Pharaoh there and, and Moses as God's representative going to Pharaoh, let my people go. But this is after all that. This is after the, the, the Passover. This is after everything these people had seen with their own eyes, what God had done. But yet, you know, here they are after they've gone through the Red Sea and they saw it parted and, 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 and Pharaoh's armies were drowned. <laughs> the, the, these people once again... You know, well, you know, thrust Moses aside, uh, rejected him, uh, di- didn't listen to him, didn't follow him, um, and, and and so we 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 see this. We see and actually it's, it's a theme. Even you can think about Joseph in this way. You know, going back to Joseph and the patriarchs there, and uh, um, and, and these mysterious ways that that God works, taking the. Uh, the least likely, but yet turning that into the person through whom he's going to deliver his salvation. So, uh, so Moses, you know, they're holding up this example of Moses and, and Stephen saying, yeah, you want to talk Moses? I'll, I'll talk to you about Moses. I'll talk to you about how my father's great-great-grandpas, your great-great-grandpas treated them. And, and now think about this. Take that lesson and now apply it to this circumstance that they're in right now. What did they do to Jesus? You know, again, the one that God sent and what they do, they rejected him. They cast him aside. They crucified him. Uh, they, they hurled all those insults at him, everything that they had done. Uh, <laughs> and so, so if you want to talk the continuity, the continuity might be this. Oh, you stiff-necked people. Uh, these people who, who, who just refused, you know, plug their ears. And as a matter of fact, we're going to get to that in just a little bit. Literally plugging their ears, you know. Not, not wanting to hear the truth, closing their eyes, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, you know, hear, hear no truth, see no truth. Uh, but, you know, just stubbornly um, re- refusing to listen, refusing to, uh, to, to follow. So, uh, so, so Stephen, you know, they, they gave Stephen the ammunition. They started to go to Moses, and, Moses like, and, and Stephen's like, yeah, you want to go to Moses? Okay, let's talk Moses. And, uh, and, and uses that to further bolster um, the, the, the position he and the apostles have of uh, proclaiming Jesus as the, uh, uh, the, the righteous one, um, the, the, the righteous one who has fulfilled everything that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, on and on and on, all the way through the Old Testament. So, uh, so, so Stephen, laying down some truth here and, uh, and hitting them pretty hard. You know, again, put yourself in that position as you're hearing this, uh, uh, you know, as the kids like to say here, you know, you, you've been burned, you know, you've been schooled, guys. Uh, no, no question about it. You know, obviously, uh, uh, you know, while, while Stephen is right, and has, has done a remarkable job just off the top of his head, uh, you know, educating these guys on, on the, the, the truth of, of their, their, their own scripture. Um, while he may be right, we'll, we'll see that uh, uh, there, there's a 
definitely a price to be paid for Stephen here. So uh, verse 54. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and they stopped their ears. Again, you know, plugging their ears. Let's not hear any truth here. They, uh, they, they stopped their ears and rushed together at him. And they cast him out of the city and they stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The first martyr. And so Stephen, um, speaking the truth, speaking the faith and, and paying the price for it and, and dying for that. And, and, and we recognize that uh, this isn't just a, a, a bygone artifact of, 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 of days gone by, but there are still many martyrs in this world today, martyrs for the faith. Uh, our good friend Jerry Jessen, the voice of the martyrs, and, uh, uh, um, and, and the, the, the wonderful uh, um, uh, witness that we see uh, through these uh, bold and courageous Stevens who are out there in our world today and in, in places where we're not, a, they're, they're not as blessed as we are here in America with this uh, freedom to, to, to worship and, and freedom to speak. And so uh, we pray, pray for them, uh, pray, for, pray for their safety, pray for, uh, for, for God's blessing, pray, pray that we would have that same courage to, uh, you know, while we have that freedom, you know, so often we, 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 we're so timid um, you know, we, we're, we're free. We're not going to have anybody beating down your door or, or, uh, or, or, or accusing you for, for talking to a friend uh, or a family member about the faith. And, uh, uh, you know, but yet so often how we, we, we are so timid. And, uh, and so pray for that, 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 same, that same courage. Um, re remarkable here, you know, even as uh, Stephen executed and, and being stoned to death and I, I just imagine you know to 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 be killed by people hurling rocks at you uh you know and, and and to be you know not just beat up in that way but to be killed in that way and, and how painful and how awful this would be and uh but yet uh the, those final verses lord do not hold this sin against them uh, you know the the forgiveness that 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 face like an angel the 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 spirit that that is there um, in Stephen and, and working through him, not just to speak this truth but also to ask for that forgiveness for the people who are doing this to him, and most notably uh, one name here that we're going to see and uh, get very familiar with later on this young man named Saul, as we'll see. Uh, Stephen's prayer, uh, don't hold this sin against them. Uh, and, and sure enough, uh, one of those who was among that number, uh, one who, whether or not he threw a stone, at least was standing idly by and holding the coats of those who were doing it, uh, Saul. And, uh, uh, but yet, uh, uh, we, we know the remarkable things that will happen as this, uh, uh, as the Saul will go through incredible changes and ultimately, uh, he himself uh, will, will go through a name change and uh, find himself as one hand picked, tapped on the shoulder by uh, by by Jesus to uh, to be uh, his apostle, and uh, and we see Saul becoming Paul, and so uh, a wonderful way to conclude that uh, to to think about the, uh, um, the 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 forgiveness that that Stephen shows and. And, and to think about the impact that had on Paul. You know, you, you read Paul's epistles and later on, um, we, we see how, uh, you know, he, he carried with him um, guilt and memories of, of, of what he had done, what he participated in, at least what he collaborated in. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, maybe part of that thorn in the flesh that he had was the memory of, of the persecution and the, the things that he did and the ways that uh, 
uh, he not just hurt, but also even um, was a party to murder. But yet, God's grace is even for him. God's grace for you and me as well. So I uh, pray that this has been a, a, a useful time here uh, in, in looking at uh, uh, the story of Stephen and uh, the events of his life. And uh, again, just God's peace, God's blessings to you all. Uh, uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you very soon and uh, worshiping together as, um, as, as circumstances will permit. And, um, and God be with you in your week ahead and in your reading and study of his word. Bye.